Like a lot of people ask the question whether they should go for an Intel Core i9 or an i7, but then they should skip the GPU and go for an RTX 4050 or an RTX 3050. That is a catastrophic mistake, guys. You should never compromise on the GPU by going for a more powerful and a faster CPU. You should always go for the faster GPU and then see what best possible CPU you can fit in your price bracket. So a GPU gets uh, outdated much quicker than a CPU. So you should try and make your GPU as future-proof as you're possible in your particular price budget. Hey, what's going on guys? Diptesh here, welcome back to the channel. So a bit of a casual setup here. Uh, so in this video, I wanted to answer the question as to why I exactly purchased this particular configuration of the Lenovo Log with the Intel Core i5 12450HX and the RTX 4060, this particular configuration. A lot of people have question on this particular configuration. Uh, I don't know why I have clarified most of the questions in my previous to previous videos uh, regarding CPU performance, GPU performance, how the both the CPU and the GPU, uh, you know, perform together as a whole. Uh, but still a lot of people have question about this particular configuration. So I'm going to clarify on that. All right. And I'm also going to answer the question as to which people this particular lock is targeted towards this particular configuration of an i5 and an RTX 4060. But before all that, if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications and also consider joining our Telegram community to engage in tech discussions and get alerted on the best tech deals the earliest. With that said, guys, let's get going. So a bit of a history. So my personal laptop is the Acer Predator Helios 300 2018. It's been almost six years I've been using this laptop and it's running great. Like it has performed really well and it has never disappointed me. All right. Uh, however, since the last couple of years, I've been wanting to upgrade. Uh, so I've been looking for an upgrade actively. Okay. Now when the RTX 30 series dropped in laptops, I wanted to purchase them, but you know, uh, personal reasons, uh, financial reasons and stuff. Plus the laptops, you know, the RTX 30 series laptops, especially the ones which were good, you know, RTX 30 series had a lot of variance in terms of performance regarding TGP, you know, because those RTX 30 series uh, GPUs were not, not that efficient. So there was a greater variance in terms of TGP and performance. So, you know, high TGP, high performance, and if TGP is lowered, performance gradually decreases. So there was a big spread in terms of performance. And the ones which will give you the full performance, those were, you know, pretty expensive, like really expensive. Like if you know uh, stuff like the Lenovo Legion with the RTX 3060, those things used to cost 140,000, 120,000 rupees. And uh, there were some good options like Asus stuff and stuff. But uh, the problem was that I always felt that the RTX 3060 specifically was a little bit gimped in terms of, you know, VRAM. The RTX 3060 laptop and the RTX 3060 desktop were pretty close in terms of actual performance. But, uh, you know, uh, NVIDIA nerfed the RTX 3060 mobile pretty hard with only six gigabytes of VRAM. So basically I passed the RTX 30 series and I was waiting for the RTX 40 series. So I was excited about the RTX 40 series a lot because of the huge improvements in efficiency due to TSMC's four nanometer node from Samsung's eight nanometer node. It was a big upgrade. Okay, the RTX 4090 dropped, the 4080 dropped, they had huge performance gains. So uh, basically it was exciting stuff. But then, you know, the RTX 40 series for laptops dropped, especially the RTX 4070. I was really excited for the RTX 4070 actually. Um, like I was super excited for the RTX 4070, but then, you know, uh, Jared's tech dropped the review of the RTX 4070 and we were really disappointed. I mean, only eight gigabytes of VRAM. Okay. First of all, that's a big pain point. It's, it only has eight gigabytes of VRAM and it costs such a lot of money. Like even now RTX 4070 laptops are well above 1,50,000 rupees, most of them. Uh, and, uh, that's insane. You cannot, like, I cannot recommend spending 1,50,000 rupees on an 8 gigabyte VRAM, you know, GPU. That, that is, that is just, that's an insane decision if you do so. So that, so that was a hard pass. RTX 4070 had only like a, you know, less than 5% improvement over the RTX 3070, uh, 3070 Ti in terms of, you know, gaming performance at 1440p and stuff. And compared to the RTX 3070 as well, it was like only like, you know, less than 10% improvement. So the RTX 4070, probably the most disappointing, you know, 70 series laptop GPU in decades. So uh, pretty much hard pass. Uh, the only, you know, GPU that was really good in terms of, uh, you know, you know, price to performance sort of was the RTX 4060. But even then the RTX 4060 was not really an exciting GPU for me. Like we have seen the reviews. The RTX 4070 is only around like 12% better than the RTX 3060 at 1440p at 1440p, remember that. 
So, you know, the RTX 3060, despite having, you know, uh, the VRAM disadvantage, like, you know, it has 60 bytes of VRAM, whereas the RTX 4060 has two extra gigabytes of VRAM, so eight gigabytes of VRAM. And despite having eight gigabytes of VRAM at 1440p, where VRAM matters a lot, the RTX 4060 was only like 12% better than the RTX 3060. Now this gap may increase in the future where games become more and more VRAM, uh, you know, intensive, uh, more resource intensive. So, but still, you know, it's not an exciting upgrade. If you're waiting for three years to upgrade a GPU, like, you know, to buy a new laptop or a new GPU, uh, gaming laptop, and you only see this much of a difference, uh, that doesn't make, you know, sense or like it doesn't, uh, it doesn't like uh, make you happy, right? So. I figured out that, hey, this RTX 40 series generation entirely for laptops, especially the mid-range, I'm not talking about the crazy expensive RTX 40 and 4090. Those are completely out of my budget. So the RTX 40 series generation over the mid-range was pretty mediocre, uh, underwhelming, to be honest. So I figured out we need to get a laptop that will give you, that will like, you know, uh, provide you with amazing value for money. And that will help you kind of skim over this underwhelming generation. And, and you know, you'll not lose a lot of money purchasing a laptop like this uh, so that you can utilize it for this generation and then upgrade to a 5070 or something like that when the 50 series drops. So I wanted a laptop like that, you know, where you don't have to spend a lot of money, but you get a lot of value in return. And thankfully what happened was RTX 40 series, uh, you know, 4060 and 4050 laptops dropped in price, which was a great thing to happen. Like the prices dropped really hard like RTX 4060 was available for 1 lakh 15,000 rupees right off the bat from you know with the ASUS stuff F15 so that really helped and that kind of masked my disappointment so I was really waiting for some laptop to appear which will have which will like have the full performance of an RTX 4060 and will not cost me more than 80,000 rupees so that was my target to get the cheapest full powered RTX 4060 laptop at as low of a cost as possible. And that's like 80,000 rupees, okay? And regarding the CPU, I was preferring AMD Ryzen because, you know, personal experience, AMD and laptop CPUs just provide you a much better laptop, like a normal laptop experience because they're so much more efficient, good battery life, the fans don't spin as much. So I was preferring Ryzen for the CPU choice, Ryzen Zen 4 particularly. But then those options were more expensive, okay? Uh, so I just had to skip Ryzen for this generation, maybe next generation again, uh, I'll go for Ryzen. But, you know, I had to skip Ryzen for this generation. Uh, and if I had to go Intel, I had one criteria. If I have to go Intel, I will require a CPU that can be undervolted. So that was a big, important criteria for me. I will not buy an Intel laptop that cannot be undervolted. My previous Helios 300 has been undervolted past six years. It was un undervolted since day one of purchase. So I don't buy Intel laptops that cannot be undervolted. Simple as that, okay? So... Based on all these criteria, this Lenovo lock fit the bill perfectly. It has the Intel Core i5 1250HX, which can be undervolted. We can make it more efficient. I just posted undervolting benchmarks, uh, you know, a couple of days ago. Uh, I think uh, last week I posted those benchmarks. You can make it so much more efficient due to the undervolting capability. Uh, plus, it's got the RTX 4060, which, perf which performs fully. If you have doubt that this RTX 4060 doesn't perform fully and it is like held back by the CPU or something. You can go check my GPU benchmark. Uh, like, like you can check my uh, entire gaming benchmark of this laptop. It's a 22 minute video. You can go watch that. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. This thing performs admirably. It's almost like, you know, full performance of the RTX 4060. If you compare it with laptops with higher end CPUs, this thing is not far back. It's maybe like a three, 4% difference. So nothing to worry about, you know, like, two, three FPS, four FPS maximum difference. So yeah, so this laptop fit the bill. It also has, you know, 900% sRGB screen, G-Sync. Uh, it's got a MUX switch with advanced Optimus. So pretty much an ideal laptop, except for the fact that it's got an Intel CPU. I would have loved to have a Ryzen CPU, but you know, that's it. So this was my target. Now, who should purchase a configuration like this? The answer is simple. Those people who want the maximum value for money in terms of performance, all right? Those who want to do high-end tasks, but they don't want to spend a lot of money. That is this configuration targeted towards, all right? A lot of people ask question to me whether this i5 processor will be a hindrance or something, and it is really not. It is really, really not. A, a lot of people ask the question whether they should go for an Intel Core i9 or an i i7, but then they should skip the GPU and go for an RTX 4050 or an RTX 3050. That is a catastrophic mistake, guys. You should never do that. It's a basic PC building rule. Whenever you want to purchase a high performance gaming laptop or you want to build a high performance PC, you should always put the maximum 
part of your budget towards the GPU, all right? That is a very important point that you should keep in mind. So you have a particular budget, you fit the best possible GPU you can in that price bracket, and then you can try to get a competent enough CPU. That is the mantra of, you know, building a gaming PC or, uh, you know, buying a gaming laptop. You fit the best possible GPU in your price in, in your price bracket or your, or your budget, and then you see what CPU options you have. Okay, you should never do the opposite. You should never compromise on the GPU by going for a more powerful and a faster CPU. You should always go for the faster GPU and then see what best possible CPU you can fit in your price bracket. Now, if you have extra budget remaining, then you can go for a better CPU. But again, it's very important to remember you should not skip the GPU, you should not you know, compromise on the GPU by going for a lower end GPU and then going for a higher end CPU. This is an absolutely fatal mistake that, you, that you're gonna make. CPUs last much longer than GPUs. This particular Intel Core i5 will last like decades, okay? But this GPU, this RTX 4060, maybe three years, okay? Maybe two and a half, three years. Like I've already shown you benchmarks of games where this RTX 4060 cannot get 60 FPS at 1080p maximum settings, all right? There are already games like that, okay? So a GPU gets uh, outdated much quicker than a CPU, so you should, Try and make your GPU as future-proof as you possible in your particular price budget, all right? So that's the bottom line. A lot of people want to purchase a laptop like this for, you know, other type of stuff like, you know, productivity, productivity and stuff. A lot of people have this misconception on GPUs, like, you know, a powerful GPU like this is only meant for gaming. It'll only help for, you know, gaming activities. But it is really not. It's been many years since GPUs play an active role in accelerating several productivity tasks. And in modern times right now with Nvidia at the top of its game, GPU acceleration is available in a lot of applications. Let's take an example, like a person asked me a couple of days ago in the comments, uh, whether they will be able to use this particular laptop configuration with the Intel Core i5 and this 4060, you know, to do single PC streaming. So probably this guy is concerned about the fact that this Intel Core i5 only has four P cores and four E cores. So it'll like not be possible to do single PC streaming with this laptop. That's totally a misconception. We no longer use CPU cores for streaming. It's been many years that we that we don't use CPU cores or CPU resources for streaming. Instead, what we use is either the CPU's iGPU, like the media encoders inside the iGPU, or we use the media encoders of the dedicated GPU with the RTX 4060. And if you use OBS, obviously you're gonna use OBS for streaming. You can use your Intel Quick Sync iGPU for you know H.264 or H.265 streaming, HEVC or H.264. Okay, the quality is great, okay? And you will not affect your CPU performance all that, maybe like 5% or so, okay? You're not going to use your CPU cores, but you're gonna use your CPUs and media encoders in the iGPU, that's what you're gonna use. Or you can also use the NVIDIA dedicated GPU to uh, perform your stream. You can use the media encoders present in the NVIDIA encoders basically, you know? You can use uh, H.264 or HEVC, or if you're using an RTX 40 series, uh, laptop, then you can use uh, AV1 encoding for your streams, which will provide you with amazing quality at a low bit rate. So there are a bunch of advantages. You no longer use your CPU cores for, you know, basically, you know, encoding. You are using your GPU media encoders, whether it's iGPU or the regular GPU. So once again, to answer your question, you can easily stream, um, perform single PC streaming with this particular laptop because it has a powerful iGPU and also has a powerful dedicated GPU with a great media encoding performance. So don't need to worry about that. Then there are people who are worried about whether they can perform video editing on this laptop, you know, 4K video editing on this laptop. Of course you can, guys. This is an RTX 4060 laptop. This GPU will, will take a lot of your video editing load. Plus the Intel iGPU, the quick sync uh, functionality in the Intel iGPU, that will handle a lot of different media codecs. Plus you also already have the RTX 4060 to handle all your, you know, uh, stuff like, you know, masking, AI masking and DaVinci Resolve, you know, your fusion effects, your GPU effects, all will be accelerated by the uh, RTX 4060 in this laptop. So it, to clear your doubt, I have compared, you know, this laptop against other higher end CPUs with lower end GPUs uh, in something called the Puget Bench, uh, for DaVinci Resolve benchmark, okay? Puget Bench benchmarks for multiple creative applications are like professional grade benchmarks. Like professional use those benchmarks to see how well their 
um, configuration will perform in all these product with tasks, whether it is video editing, 3D modeling, okay, stuff like this. So I've ran the Puget Systems benchmark for DaVinci Resolve for this laptop and I've compared against other laptops with Intel Core i9 processor and RTX 4050 to prove the point that having a faster GPU is really helpful. Uh, you know, you should not compromise on the GPU. So you can see the scores guys. Uh, the this particular configuration at such a low cost performs admirably. It performs almost the same as those i9 configurations but at the same time will give you better GPU FX score. So if you're using a lot of GPU FX, like a lot of effects on your uh, videos, those will perform much better with this laptop because of the RTX 4060. And you can also check some more benchmarks that have compared this configuration across with other configurations with faster CPUs, faster GPUs, so stuff like that. You can get a grasp of how well this laptop performs in terms of uh, video editing. So again, to answer your question, this laptop is totally capable of doing some high-end video editing because of this RTX 4060 GPU and also because of the Intel Core i5's quick sync media engine. And finally, a lot of people also ask question about, you know, 3D modeling and stuff like that. So again, do some research on what type of 3D modeling, 3D rendering software you're using, how much they get benefit from the, uh, from the dedicated GPU. But I do know for a fact that 3D is all about the GPU, especially if you use things like Blender. So for context, the fastest uh, CPU for laptops is the Ryzen 9 7945HX. It's got 16 cores, okay? It can perform the classroom render in around 135 seconds, which is really fast. Now, if you compare this particular RTX 4060 with that, uh, you know, Ryzen 9 7940HX, this RTX 4060, can perform the same render in just 20 seconds. So you can understand how much faster a GPU is compared to a CPU in term, like for 3D rendering. Because GPUs have thousands of cores which run in parallel to accomplish your render, all right? CPUs have big cores, versatile cores, but they are not, they cannot perform parallelism to the extent as this GPU, which has like thousands of cores, okay? So obviously the GPU is king when it comes to 3D rendering and stuff, but do your research, do check your a particular application, how much they affect on the GPU, check some benchmarks, do some research. But yeah, the bottom line is that do not compromise on the GPU. Always go for the best GPU possible in your price budget. And then if you have remaining budget left, then you can upgrade your CPU. So that's it for this video, guys. I wanted to talk about this particular Intel Core i5 lock. A lot of people have questioned on this. So I hope after this video, you got some more context. Again, join our Telegram community. If you have more doubts, also get alerted on the best tech list the earliest. And if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. Let's try to get to 10,000 subscribers finally. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.